Okay. Alright. Um, who are you and like what do you do? Okay, my name is Matt Ott. I'm the president of the Flying Squirrels Disc Sports Club. Here today in the freezing cold to teach you all about the wonderful sport of disc golf. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard of disc golf, it's much like regular ball golf in a essence that you uh, shoot the, sh uh, th throw your disc and you count your strokes just like you would uh, hit the ball in regular ball golf and count your, and count your strokes. And you have the, uh, your object in ball golf would be to put it in the little hole. Whereas in disc golf, your object is to throw the frisbee in one of those metal baskets back there. But again, the rules are the same. Basically, you, you, you have tee pads and you drive, you approach, and you putt. What these guys are doing back there, they're putting. Now, like regular ball golf, which you see most golfers walking around with their golf bags and their caddies and everything, disc golf, we have a golf bag as well. And we have uh, all kinds of different discs that, that do different things. So it's really important which disc you choose when, when you go to make your shot. For example, usually when you drive, you want something that's going to be able to hold flight for a long time, and it's going to it's going to stay straight on you. It's not going to flip over. So you have these overstable discs. Overstable disc will turn left on you, and it's called the hyzer route. It's really good for long distance drives. You also have discs here, like the classic rock, that will hold straight. Not as good as for long distances, but it's good for the short range still. You don't want to flip over, over right. So for a shorter shot, you, you would take a, a, mid, a mid driver like the rock. And also finally, uh, you have putters. Putters is what these guys are playing with behind us. This is what you go to attack the chains with. Putters, putters are a little bit softer, a little bit, little, bit, little bit chewier, so they stick to the chains a little bit. They can't throw as far, so you, you don't want to drive at one of these, but they're, they're great for sticking to the metal, and that's what you want to use. How do you mark your lie? After you make a shot, what you want to do is make sure you mark your lie. How you mark your lie, how you mark your lie, you take out your mini marker, okay, you carry these with you whenever you play in the tournament, or when you're playing with your friends, you always have one of these in your pocket. Hold this with you, because when you make your shot, it's um, not going to be on. Okay, so how, did this, uh, how did this sport get created? So don't know. Wait, how how was the sport created? That's not, I don't know. Was, I don't know the whole history. I'll tell you what. The sport. Uh, you're gonna cut this out and edit it, right? Yeah. Well. All right. This golf was formed in the early '70s. Um, it's it started with a course in uh, Oak Grove, Pasadena. Uh, the second course in the world was actually in Fairmont Park, Philadelphia. So we got a lot of history in this area. That was, again, in the early 70s. Today, there's over 750 disc golf courses around the world. So it's growing in popularity. You can see disc golf courses popping up all around uh, the area. In our local area, we have a, we have a, a lot of courses that I'm proud of. Um, Tinicum Park, we have, we have Rutgers University. There's a course. We have, uh, again, Fairmont Park, Sedgley Woods, there's a course. Also right here, Tyler Park in Newtown, uh, another disc golf course. So there's plenty of, of disc golf area around here. Also, Delaware's got a lot of fine courses which aren't, too, which aren't too far away. So I think we're really privileged in that way to uh, live in such a, such, such a uh, precise area where we have all, all kinds of disc golf action. Why do you play disc golf? I play disc golf because it's a way for me to get together with my friends, come, on, come outside, be out in nature, you know, uh, do some hiking while you're playing. It's a great exercise. It's uh, physically and mentally challenging. It's, it's, it's a good time. You can always play and try and improve your score um, and, and better yourself. And the best thing about it, I'd say, is, is when you're with your friends, you play around, no matter what happens, we usually go out somewhere afterwards, you know, have some laughs, talk about what, you know, talk about the game that day. And it's just a good time. I mean, when, when, when else can you get a bunch of guys to come out in January 20 degree weather, it's freezing right now, believe it or not, it's freezing out here. Come out here in, in, in the woods and, and play some golf. It's, it's disc golf, it's great, it's that much fun and it's worth it. How long does it take to play like 18 holes? The average 18 hole course, if you're playing, it uh, depends on the kind of group, if you got like a small group, maybe three guys, you can probably get 18 holes in about an hour and a half to, to, to two hours, I'd say. You get maybe a larger group, um, especially uh, if you're in a tournament, it's going to take a little bit longer because people take their time um, and, and they, they line up their shots a little more carefully. So in, in tournament play, yeah, you're, you're looking at a good two, or maybe over two hours. In regular play, depending on your group, you can probably get it in in about an hour and a half or so. How do you get tournaments organized? How do you, how do you get in? Well, um, 
The club that I represent is the Flying Squirrels Disc Sports Club. We have monthly meetings the first Tuesday of every month at Chi Chi's Restaurant in Langhorn. We have a membership fee of only $35 a year uh, for the first year, and then it's only $30 for renewal, so it's great. And when you join our club, you get a disc golf starter kit, which includes a golf disc, uh, the mini discs that you mark your lives with, the uh, PDJ rule book, plus a uh, subscription to our newsletter called The Acorn. So it's, it's, that's an easy way to get started, because once you start coming to the meetings, you get the uh, information on when the tournaments are, when people are playing. There's constantly weekly events going on, so it's real easy to get involved. So what you want to do is you make sure you come to one of these meetings, you, you start meeting the people who, who are involved, and, and, and you get involved yourself. Do you have to be like a, an expert, or is it for all? No, disc golf, the, the beautiful thing about disc golf is that it's for any age player, any skill level. So you can come out here, uh, I mean, there's a novice division. It's for the beginner. It's for the person who's never thrown a Frisbee before in their life. And that person can come out here and not feel intimidated and play some disc golf, because there's going to be others at your same skill level and the great thing about this is the novice people and the beginners they're they're our pride and joy because we know that they're the future of the sport and if we don't get more people like that out then the sport isn't gonna isn't, isn't gonna make it in the long run so we love the novice we love to see new people out. we're always trying to get new people out here you know we, we love that like um how many people like play disc golf in this area um there's a uh Big mother organization to, to a lot of the local clubs called Mad C. It represents uh, Maryland, Delaware, Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And pretty much, pretty much, here's their uh, logo. Okay, that's the mother organization for all the clubs around here. Um, roughly, I would say maybe about 19, 20 clubs in the Mad C organization. Uh, rough estimate of people, I don't know, but if you go to a, a tournament, especially the Mad Sea Ran tournaments, you're going to go there. You're going to have uh, you're going to have 80 people at this tournament, just for, just amateurs alone. And uh, you take the the pro side, you've got another uh, you know 60, 70 people. So you're going to get about 150, 175 people or so at at a tournament. So it's it's really catching on. It's, a lot of people uh, are playing disc golf these days. How good are you at disc golf? Uh, my skill level, uh, short of where I want it to be, I guess, but getting better every time I play. Um, officially, I'm an advanced amateur, but um, you know the next the next step up is to turn pro. When you turn pro, which basically means you, you can enter tournaments for cash. Right now, I'm still in the amateur status, which means I'm playing for prizes. So, I've been here. Hopefully, by next year, uh, I can take my my game to the next level where I, I can compete for uh, for in cash competitions. Um, my major goal this year is attending the Amateur World Championships in um, Kansas City, Missouri. So we'll see how that goes, depending on my, my out outcome there. I'll be getting an Amateur World rank in there. So, you know, we'll see. Hopefully uh, my game steps up a little bit. Yeah, um, can you do this professionally? You can, you can play disc golf professionally. There's, a, there's only a, a select few of professionals who actually do this for a living, and they're really good. Uh, these people are actually sponsored by disc golf companies, um, you know, you got Scott Stokely and uh, the Ken Climos. These guys are actually in, employed by disc golf manufacturers. Um, they hit tournaments. There's a Super Tour, which is the A-tier events. They're the big tournaments where you where you can win a few thousand dollars uh, if you if you cash well. So so you can do it for a living. It's tough. And right now it's only a select few. But we by holding tournaments. By the way, we have a big tournament called the Nutbuster which is in June, June 19th and June 20th. And uh, we, get, we, do, we work real hard on getting sponsorships and trying to get big, big names. So that's how, that's how we try to build the sport, getting sponsorships, getting the big companies involved, trying to, trying to make a name for it. Um, what kind of techniques do you, how do you throw a disc? Okay, well throwing a disc, uh, there's a couple different kinds of throws. You can show it. Okay, here's a putter. <laughs> throw me a game of putter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what I want to do now is take a minute to, to show you uh, um, different kinds of throws. Here is a putter, okay? Um, actually, you know what, let's not start with the putter, start with the driver or something. Um, first, the first throw I want to, I want to show you uh, a little bit about is uh, the drive. Okay, when driving, you, you have, quick explanation, you have uh, different kinds of discs that you, can, that, that you can select when you're making your shot. You have drivers you have approach discs, and you have putters. This here is an example of a driver, okay? The different kinds of throws that you can release a driver is a 
hydro throw. A hydro throw is, is an angle down sloping to the ground, down to the left. That uh, will, will cause a disc to make a hard, a hard uh, curve to the left. The other kind of throw is an Anheuser. An Anheuser is simply the same thing, but just slope down the other direction. This is when you want to try and get that disc to break the other way. Really difficult to do. You, you'd, be, you'd, you'd be surprised how hard it is to get your Frisbee when you want it to turn the way that you want it. Uh, the next kind of throw would be an approach disc. Approach disc like the common here. Not meant for long distance driving, but the beautiful thing about this is it can hold a straight flight. So you, this is this is for maybe your your 100 feet shot and maybe maybe a 150 foot shot, perfect for for laying it up to the basket. When you finally get it laid up, you want to go for your putt. Okay, when putting, you want a softer disc, something that's going to stick to the chains. This magnet here is perfect. See, it's called a soft magnet. You're not going to drive with this sucker, so it's not going to go very far. But within 25, 20 feet of the basket, it's perfect. You can throw it, hit the chains, be confident that it's going to stick to the chains, and it's going to, and it's going to, it's going to fall in the basket for you. So there are basically three kinds of shots. You learn them three shots, you'll, you'll go a long way, you know. How about some techniques like the slice or the the uh, or just the three throws I already showed you. There's some specialty throws that you can use when you're really getting a jam. Uh, one of them that I really like to use when you when you really don't have a lot of room to 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 take the uh, alley that you want. It's called the the hammer throw and simply just like kind of throwing a baseball where you hold the pie, snap your elbow that way, right over the head, can get you out of a jam. Um, another kind of throw uh, that can really get you out of some jams when you really can't get that, that backhand motion going is the, is the flick. And you just place two fingers on the bottom of your disc like this and you flick it underhand like so. It's a lot of wrist, but it, it really is an effective way of getting yourself uh, out of jams. When you don't have the alleyway, that's when you, it's when it really separates the good disc golfers from the, the, the not as good disc golfers. When you have all these other kind of uh, throws in your bag for Arsenal, it's great. I mean, uh, I see people rolling the disc instead of throwing it and making you know, great strides with that and, and maybe throwing, uh, rolling it farther than some people can throw it. You know? So when you want to roll it, you know, get your thumb in here, you know, throw it down on the ground. Let it go. You know, it's a lot of people like to, to send it in the air, have it hit, have it hit the ground maybe uh, 50 feet out or so. It's really good for distances. So I mean, there's there's plenty of different ways of doing it. But again, there's there's no there's no strict rules to how, how you get to throw this thing. It's really up to you and to get creative with it and whatever works for you. Yeah, it's good. I got so many. How well, much it costs for uh, for a dish? And, how expensive are they? One of the greatest things uh, about this board is is the is the low cost. These discs here, which you know you can get them through the local clubs and stuff, uh, or go for maybe about seven eight dollars a piece. So they're really cheap. Um, you go through maybe you know three or four years or so. But compared to regular golf, uh, with golf clubs, those prices are outrageous. You come out to a golf course like this. There's no green fees. You can play as much as you want, which means you can get as good as you want, and it's not gonna. It's not going to, uh, you know. Okay, uh, we have an upcoming event here called the Nutbuster Open. It's our, it's our uh, third annual Nutbuster Open. We're really proud of it. It's a PDJ sanctioned event, so uh, we should get a pretty big draw. Uh, crowd being that it's a B tier and points, double points are awarded for people who are interested in their PDJ points. We're going to be doing an amateur day and a pro day. The amateur day is going to be on June 19th and we're going to go ahead and have the pro day the next day on June 20th. So it should be a good time. Uh, we work real hard on getting sponsorships. Some of the, some of the ways you can sponsor the club like Hands restaurant did was they bought these little mini markers that you use to mark your, mark your disc when it hits the ground. Uh, they worked out a thing for us where, where, the, where uh, here's the, uh, he, 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 I don't want to put that in there. I might get them in trouble. Oh. I don't want to put the, about how they sponsored us That's beer. Right. Just, they sponsor us. In yeah. Things. All right, go ahead. Okay, again, we have our upcoming uh, PDJ event called the Nutbuster. There's different ways you can sponsor our club. Uh, one of the ways to sponsor this tournament is buying these minis like the Hulahians restaurant group did. You know, there's there's many different ways you can do it. You can you can uh, supply us with a banner or something. Um, we can hang it up at our tournament. 
like like sp sprint did last year uh, for a certain we, we have different ways you can work it out we do tournament uh, we do banners we do t signs we do things like that any way to get your company's name you know out in the public and that's how you can sponsor the tournament and sponsor the club and, and help promote the sport it's really it's really it's really fun any any uh, like closing like sort of yeah like any um, again I represent the Flying Squirrels to the Sports Club. We have a website out there that you should check out. It's, it's, it's really well done. It's www.websalute.com slash flying squirrels. Uh, check us out. We have all of our upcoming tournament events in there, our, our meeting notes, anything anything uh, that, that matters to us, all of our, all of our rules uh, to the club and stuff and, and how you can join and how you can get involved. It's, it's all there on the web. Check it out. All right, cool.